Thank you very much. So, and so uh, that's uh, thank you for the invitation to, to to give this talk. So I'm going to explain a joint research with uh, with Victor and, and Thomas. So it's about um, so maybe to oops I have to uh, so it's about some uh, applications of across to the study of. So it's about some applications of our press to the study of impaling spaces of manifolds and some kind of higher dimensional version of uh, Cotton Dick Teich Miller theory. So basically, to so in this uh, talk, I will mainly deal with the flowing fundamental case where I take M to be the Euclidean space Rm and N to be the Euclidean space Rn. And then I consider IM the standard embeddings of RM into RN given by sending RM to the first M coordinates of RN. And then I, I consider actually the space, which I'm going to denote by MC RM RN, the space of smooth embeddings of RM into RN. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, the, the wizard, the wizard is much better, right? Because otherwise we see the dark points, so, so you don't like the right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so maybe on the side. On the small screen is okay, but there it's great. Okay. <laughs> otherwise, I can use the, use the pen actually. So so here and so here are smooth embeddings with uh, with compact supports means that there are I assume that there is a compact K outside of which uh, F agrees uh, with the standard embedding, actually. And I consider a similarly defined space of uh, immersions. And then the homotopy fiber of the obvious map from the sp this space of smooth embeddings towards the space of immersion with compact supports. So the idea <laughs> is that this space is well understood from the Hirsch smile theory. And the, this space here measures the difference between the embedding space and the space of immersion. And Victor in his talk is going to tackle a more general case, uh, which we also get in our work. It's a study of uh, embedding spaces, modular immersions from M, an open subset of Rm into Rn. Okay, but in this talk, I mainly focus on this fundamental case. Global number writes that M hat is more or less a framed version of M. So this one? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. But no, just uh, just take the homotopy fiber. So it just controls the difference between this embedding space and this immersion space in homotopy. Uh, so this, this relationship can be made more precise, but I'm not going to, to take um, time on that. Yeah. And so, so there are the results of a good revised calculus, which gives an operatic description of this space of smooth embeddings module immersions. So here is a summary, a summary of the results, actually. So I'm not going to, to say much about uh, this background, just to say, so, but so there are actually several uh, levels. So here, this map one. So it says that this space, so it's, it's some sense. So you see, it's a big space. It gives a description of this space in terms of something where you, you deal with continuous maps satisfying some structure properties instead of uh, global smoothness properties. And so in this map one, it says that this space of smooth embeddings module immersions is weakly homotopy equivalent to a space of maps of 
by modules over operas of so space of operatic by module maps over the dm so dm is your part of little m disk and so here we consider the space of maps from of, of by operatic by modules from dm towards dn okay and this was first obtained by uh, by actually by def sina so using another language uh, in 2002 for m equals one. And then, so basically, uh, Devsina was giving a, a co-simplicial description of this space, which turns out to be the same as this uh, operatic mapping space. And later on, it was obtained by Aaron Turchin in 2011, so for all m larger or equal to one, actually. So it gives the first operatic presentation of this embedding space. And two, visceral two, gives a final results, which say that this space actually it's identified. So this omega m plus one, it's the m plus one first uh, uh, m plus one fold loop space on a space of upright maps from d n towards d n. Okay, so it gives it gives map better information on this on this embedding space in the homotopical sense. So it was obtained, so one and two are, so are obtained by methods of a Goodwill calculus. So two was obtained by Boavida Weiss in uh, 2015 for all M. And actually, there is also some kind of general developing statements, which relate this operatic mapping, this space of maps of operat by modules to this M plus one fold space of operat maps. And this was obtained by Dwyer S in 2010, independently by Victor Turchin, and by Du Colombian Turchin for all methods, by, for all M larger or equal to, to one, actually. So, in the, so, so the statements here are more general. Actually, you have a generalization of this statement where, where you take a more general than DN on the target. So, yeah. Sorry. How do you map the M to the So there is a standard map from the M so into the yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so what I would like to do in this talk is first to recall the definition of the apparat of little M disks very quickly, and then to try to, to explain so how we can compute this operatic mapping space, actually. How we can describe the homotopy of this operatic mapping space so to gain a combinatorial model of this object at least rationally okay so first of all a quick reminder on the operator of little m disk so the spaces of little m disk dnr consists of collections of all little m disk as in this picture which are embedded in a fixed unit and disk and we assume that the, the little m disk has different interiors and are indexed from one up to two R. So in this example, we see a configuration of four little M disks. And there is a map from this space of little M disk to the space of configuration of points of R points in the, in the unit disk, which is just defined by taking the centers of a little disk and forgetting about the radius. So this map, is homotopy equivalent, so this is very elementary. So from the topological viewpoint, the configuration spaces, so you get, so you get all top, every topological information about the spaces of little and this at the configuration space level. But the fact that on the little and this spaces, you have more structure. So so first you have an action of the of the symmetry groups. Oh, we can reduce. So you have an action of a symmetric group, sigma R, on the little and spaces and on the configuration spaces similarly. Just this is just by uh, permutation of the little disk indices. But on the little and spaces, in addition, what you have are composition operations of this form, which take a configuration of k little and disk, a configuration of L little n-disk, 
as in this example, so these operations are denoted by circle I, and returns a configuration of K plus L minus one little indice, which is defined by playing this configuration in the ith little disk of the first configuration by an obvious rescaling operation. Okay, so in this example, you get this result. And the operats of, of little end disk, dn, are the structure objects defined by the collection of the spaces, dnr, together with this set of operations. So in this talk, I'm not going to use the terminology of an DN operat, but maybe uh, Victor is going to use it in this talk. So just to remember, so in, in topology, we also consider the class of DN operats. So in topological spaces, which is a class of operats that are weakly homotopy equivalent to this operats of little entities. So there are some known, I would like to recall also some known results about the, the cohomology and the homology of the operat of little entities. First, the cohomology is known by a, by, so in the case n equals to two, it was obtained by Vladimir Arnold and later on generalized by, by Fred Cohen. And so the cohomology of the configuration spaces of R points in D and in the disk, and equivalently the cohomology of the little and disk spaces D and R, have a presentation as a graded symmetric algebra generated by classes omega ij modded out by relation which says that the square of omega ij is zero. And this set of relations, which are called the, the Arnold relations. And this classes omega ij's are just given by taking the pullbacks of the volume forms on the n minus one sphere under the map pij, which, uh, which takes a configuration z1, zr, to the configuration of the points Z, I, Z, J. So it's a presentation of this, um, of this cohomology as algebras, of this cohomology as algebras, but also we have co-product operations, which are induced at this level by the composition operations of a little disk operat. So this gives operations of this form, which comes goes from the cohomology of d n k plus n minus one towards the tensor product of the cohomology of d n k and the cohomology of d n l through the QNF isomorphism, and which which are in some sense dual in the categorical sense to the composition operations of an apparatus. So they they give to this collection of graded commutative algebras the structure of a corporate in credit commutative algebras. So later on, I will call such structures of credit corporates. And you can easily describe this coproduct operations on the generators, okay, by, by this kind of formulas. And also the, the homology <coughs> of, a, of a little d spaces is known as an apparatus. So if you take the collection of homology of the little and these spaces, then dually, as in the previous theorem, you have composition product operations, which gives to this homology the structure of an operat in graded vector spaces. And this operat actually, it has a simple presentation as the operat that governs the structure of an n Poisson algebra. So this means this homology operat it is generated by a product operation in degree zero, which corresponds to the fund fundamental class of the points, and a product of a bracket operation in degree n minus one, which corresponds to the fundamental class of the n minus one sphere. And the, so the, the idea of this presentation is that every class here can be obtained as operatic composites with respect to this composition operations of this operations, modded out by the usual uh, relations of a Poisson structure. So I'm going to use uh, this results. 
So the main objective of, um, of the talk is to give, so the main objectives actually are to give first a combinatorial description of the derived mapping space they are proud of. So I forgot previously to mention that I'm considering mapping spaces in the derived sense. So the space of maps from DM towards a certain rationalization of DN. So you are not able to deal with the, with the integral version of DN. You have to, 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 to take rationalization. And also on the homotopy automorphism spaces of rationalized DN. So one of the first purpose of the core of the, of, the, of the talk actually will be to explain the, the definition of this rationalization process. Okay. And to, to mention one point, in fact, you can check that this rationalization functor commutes with a mapping space construction. So if you look at the space of maps from DM towards the rationalizations, it's weakly homotopy equivalent to the rationalization of a space of maps from DM towards DN, at least as soon as you assume that N minus N is larger or equal to three. So this means if I go back to the previous statement, oops, that's here. So with this result, we get information on the rational homotopy of this space and hence on the M plus one fold developing of this space up to rational equivalence. So that's here. No. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So here is the, the main result which I would like to explain. So the claim is that this operatic mapping space is weakly homotopy equivalent to the space of more Cartan elements. So this is what I'm denoting by MC dot. So for a completely algebra. It's just the space of more Cartan forms on the simplices with values in L. So the forms which satisfy the more Cartan equation. And so the claim is that this operatic mapping space, rationally, it's the space of more Cartan forms on the Harry graph complex. So the definition of this complex was already, I think it was already considered in previous talks. And just um, before to review this definition, I would like to say that, so here this is in the case where N is, is larger or equal to M is larger or equal to two. In the case where, so the result extends to the case where M is equal to one. And in, in this case, you have to consider uh, the deformation of the natural uh, the algebra structure of this uh, area graph complex actually. You have to consider what is called the Scheuret L infinity structure. And the, so to, to add a remark, so this, from this result, yeah, we can get information on the rational homotopy groups of our mapping spaces by using a, a statement of Alexander Berglund, which says that in general, the homotopy of a, of a moral quantum space of a complete algebra is given by a homology of a twisted version of a twisting of the Lie algebra. So, okay, so to recall things quickly, the Harry graph complex at GCMN, so it's a complete DG Lie algebra. It consists of formal series of connected graphs with internal vertices, internal edges, and external legs, which we call the, the hairs, as index examples. So the difference, so the, so the, the homology, homological degree of every graph is determined by, by counting minus n for each vertex, n minus one for each internal edge, and n minus one minus m for each air, and by adding a global degree shift by m, okay? So the definition up to, to parity only depends on on, doesn't depend on M and N, only the grading depends on M and N. Okay. And the differential is defined by the blow up of vertices. So you blow up 
one vertex in two vertices connected by, by an internal edge. And the bracket is given by this picture. So the idea, so if you start with a graph with airs alpha, another graph with airs beta, the idea is, is to connect a hair of alpha, so here, to a vertex of beta. And you sum over all possibilities. Okay. And you anti-symmetrize the process. So this is the DGD algebra structure that you consider in the previous statement, in this statement actually, for the definition of this more Cartan space, except in the case where m is equal to one, where you have to, to deform this structure. Okay. And you have also results about uh, rational homotopy automorphism spaces, which says that um, this space of self homotopy equivalences in the derived sense of the rationalization of Dn it's the same thing as a semi-direct product of Q cross times the space of cycles in the tensor product of a Konsevich graph complex with the, the forms on the simplices. And this, this simplicial set, it is equipped with a monoid structure, actually the group structure, which is deduced from the baker campbell hausdorff formula by using that this complex is also equipped with another Lie algebra model structure. <laughs> and just to, to mention the relationship between this statement and other results. So it was already mentioned that in the case where n is equal to two, Thomas proved that the homology of a graph complex, it's uh, the one dimensional Q vector space, put it in degree one, plus the Crotton Dick Teichmuller Credit Lie algebra. And the, this statement here actually reflects uh, this relation, which was also mentioned by, by Geoffroy in his talk, between the, the space of cell homotopy occurrences of rationalization of D2 and the rational, rational, rational Crotton Dick Teichmuller group. Actually, actually the, there's three statements. So this one this one and this one are not independent. Two of them imply the third. Okay, so to, also to recall very briefly the, the definition of a Konsevich graph complex again. So it consists of connected graphs of this form. And so, the, so again, up to, to parity, uh, and it doesn't depend on N up to the grading. So it's the grading of a, the degree of a graph is determined by counting minus n for each vertex, n minus one for each edge. The differential is defined by the blow up of vertices again. And the Lie bracket is given by this picture. So if you take such a graph, alpha and another one beta, the idea is to put beta inside a vertex of, uh, of alpha, okay? And to connect the incident edges of this vertex in alpha to vertices of beta. And again, you sum over all, possi all possibilities and anti-symmetrize the operation. Okay, so, so in the time that is left, I would like to, so probably I, I will only be able to, to explain part two, to, to, to do part one, two, and there to be, I will be very brief on part three, and part four will be explained in Victor's talk, actually. Okay. So in the first step, I'd like to explain this rationalization process for our parts, and now we can compute mapping spaces of our parts through an algebraic model. Okay. And then I'm going to explain uh, also where graph complexes occur in the picture. So before beginning, I would like to make some quick recollections on the Sullivan rational homotopy theory. So it was already, so the outcomes actually, the outcomes of the theory were explained in Alexander talks this morning. So here, what I need is the, the Sullivan model. So it's a functor which goes from the category of simplicial sets. So it's equivalent to the, 
to the k to the homotopy theory of top and simplicial sets is equivalent to the homotopy theory of uh, topological spaces through the minor can equivalence. And so this functor omega upper star goes from simplicial sets to DG commutative algebras. It's given by a kind of rational version of a, of a Durham complex. So for the simplicity delta n, for instance, omega upper star of delta n is given by the forms that are polynomials with respect to the variables x1 and xn. And the differential is given by the different Durham differential. So the idea is that this functor gives a faithful model of the topology of the homotopy of simplicial sets of rational homotopy of simplicial sets. And to retrieve a simplicial set from its image under this functor, you can use a functor g dot that goes in the converse direction. So basically it's defined as a left adjoint of omega per star. It can also be given by this formula. And these functors, omega per stars and g dot have good homotopical properties in the sense that they form a current pair. So this means that you can take derived functor of them to compute homotopy meaningful uh, functors actually. So in what follows, what I'm going to consider is the Sullivan realization of a DG commutative algebra, which is defined by applying a derived functor of g dot to A. So this means that applying the functor g dot to some covariant resolution, to some good covariant resolution of A in the category of DG commutative algebra. And the claim is that if you start with a connected simplicial set, which satisfies reasonable assumptions, if you take the image of this simplicial set under the Sullivan functor and go back using this realization functor to simplicial set, then what you get is a space XQ, which represents a rationalization of a space X in the sense that this mapping X goes to X2 is a rational counterpart of the classical rationalization process of family and groups. Okay. So it's, it's a very good model to do computation. So really you can easily do computation on the rational homotopy of simplicial sets in the category of DG commutative algebras. You would like, you would like to have the same for operats, for topological operats and equivalently for operats in simplicial sets. So the idea is to re rely on this model. So the, the Sullivan model associate a DG commutative algebra to a simplicial set. So to get an operatic upgrading of this model, the idea, so the, the wish is to have a model which associates a corporate, so the structures which are dual corporate in the categorical sense because of the contravariance of the functor, so corporate in the category of commutative DG algebras. So in what follows, I call this structure a uh, OPF DG corporate. So OPF DG corporate explicitly consists of a collection of commutative DG algebras together with an action of a symmetry group sigma R on each DG algebra AR and coproduct operations, circle I star as the operations on the cohomology of a little disoperate that I considered previously. Okay. And these operations are required to satisfy some natural relations. So the idea is to try to relate operate in topological spaces and topological operate in, to in simplicial sets to model which have this form by relying on the Sullivan model. So if you look at the construction, if you start with an operat P in simplicial sets and you take the, the Sullivan model, omega bar per star PK of the spaces PK underlying this operat. So you want to look at which kind of structure you get at this level. So the operat is equipped with composition products of this form as the example of the operat of little and disk. And if you see what it does, at the level of a Sullivan model, you can see that these operations, they induce maps from omega per star on PK plus L minus one towards omega per star 
of the Cartesian product of PK of PL just by contravariant functionality of the Sullivan model. And now to go to the tensor product and to get a plane corporate structure, you need a map in that direction. So and you see there is a, a problem because you have a Kunef map, but it goes in the wrong di direction. It's only a quasi-iso. It's not an isomorphism. So if you want to define an operatic upgrading of a Sullivan model, you have in some sense to find a way to invert these maps coherently, to define a replacement, to, to, to fix this issue and to define a replacement of this model. If you look at the functor that goes the other way around, then there is no issue actually. Because so if you start with an opt DG corporate, equipped with such core product operations. Then if you take the, the spaces G dot AK associated to the DG commutative algebras that underlie A, then you have maps. So this maps induce maps from G dot AK tensor AL towards G dot AK plus L minus one. But now you have a natural map that goes in this direction but which in this case is an isomorphism. So there is no problem in inverting these maps. So this means that by taking the collection of the simplicial sets, you get an upright in simplicial sets associated to A and hence G dot induces a functor from up DG corporates to upright in simplicial sets. So now, we can do the rational homotopy theory. You can fix things. So the idea is to start with this functor and to observe that it actually has a right adjoint, which defines a good operatic upgrading of a Sullivan functor omega per star. So this way, by, so this right adjoint exists for general reason. So it gives you really a map, a functor from operating in simplicial sets. So which gives you a functor which to any upright in simplicial sets associates an upright in DG of corp, uh, sorry, corp, uh, of DG corporate. Okay, so you get a model. And what you just have to check is that if you forget about the structure operations of your corporate or upright, and you consider the collection of DG commutative algebras that underlies the model of an upright in simplicial sets, then, then you get commutative DG algebras that are quasi isomorphic to the Sullivan, Sullivan model of the spaces PR underlying P. Okay. So this means that up to homotopy, if you forget upright structures, that you really retrieve the Sullivan model. And this says you that you get a good result. So again, you can uh, apply the same trick as for spaces and take, if you start with an upright P in simplicial sets, you take the image of this upright, so the model of this upright in the category of up DG corporates, and go back by using the derived functor of G dot, so to get the realization of this upright in simplicial sets, that you get an upright PQ whose terms, whose underlying spaces, PQR, are the same up to homotopy as the rationalization of the spaces PR that underlies P. Is the second point also about the time consumption? Yeah, also you, no, here you don't, um, yeah, you need, a, yeah, exactly. You need finite abstentions in this statement and in this statement too, actually. Ah, I don't have any counter example, but uh, so to prove a statement, at least to at least to prove a statement, you need these assumptions. Okay. Okay. But you don't need the so, so you don't need nil potents or other assumptions, but, but in this case, uh, it's more difficult to, to understand the, this space actually. So. It says you that you retrieve, uh, so under these assumptions, you retrieve the Sullivan rational homotopy for spaces uh, 
term wise in any case. Mm -hmm. And so, so now we can apply this, um, this result. So I'm going to skip. So just to say that, uh, maybe just very quick, it's not essential. So the idea is that also this applies in some sense, it gives a solution. So it's to the, to the inversion, to a current inversion of this, of this quasi ISO actually. And it's, it can be formalized in terms of, of this remark, which says that it satisfies some kind of uh, universal property. Okay. And now I think uh, I have to speed up. I still have 10 minutes left or something like that. <laughs> so 15, 16, okay. But anyway, so so just to, to also, so I have to say that you have also a, so this category, on this category of of DG corporates, we also have a simplicial enrichment. So the, so which means that uh, we can define mapping spaces in this category. So for of DG corporates A and B over Q, the, the simplicial set of maps from A towards B is the set of morphisms of of DG corporates maps over the DG commutative algebra omega upper star delta dot. So you take this change of scalar operations to get a simplicial set from the, from, from the morphism sets of of DG corporates. And, and then, so the, the consequence, the follow up of the theorem, the corollary of, of, of the theorem, is that you can compute, so from the adjunction between between the, the, the model of your upper star sharp and G dot, we can deduce that the space of maps from P to the rationalization of an upright Q can be computed <coughs> as a space of, so in the space of maps in the derived sense, as a derived space of maps from the model of P towards the model of Q in the category of of DG corporates in the sense of this definition. So you have an algebraic query. So to summarize, you have an algebraic query to compute mapping, mapping spaces of operators in topological spaces, at least rationally. And you have a, a similar result for homotopy automorphism spaces with the assumption that your product consists of Q-good spaces in the sense of rational homotopy theory. So this means that the rationalization functor is idempotent in this uh, to homotopy in the spaces. Okay, so, so that's the result. So now the, to, to reach our initial objective. So the goal is to compute this mapping spaces for the parts DM and DM. Okay, and for this, so we have this, uh, this model which exists, which is good for the theory, but to carry out this computation, we need a small model of DM. And this model is provided by a suitable interpretation of a Konsevich formality result. So it's, uh, so actually Konsevich proved such a formality statement first over the reals by using explicit methods. And we give a proof of a stronger intrinsic formality statement with Thomas, and which also implies that the result is, is valid over Q actually. Okay, at least for n equals to larger equal to three, but I have a method. And for n equals to two, you can use the existence of rational associators to get that the result is valid over Q2. Okay. And so this, um, this formality statement says that this, the model of dn, so here I'm using the notation R omega upper star sharp for the derived functor of omega upper star sharp which by an abuse of notation, I apply to a simplicial model of your product of little and disk. Okay. And the, and the zigzag of quasi-ISO relates this model to what I denote here Poisson and star, upper star. So it's the, it's the Poisson corporate, so it's a dual operate in credit vector spaces of a Poisson operate. It's the same as the cohomology of your product of little entities, of which I described the, the structure at the beginning of the talk. Actually. 
And so, so you see that this, so you have this on this side, this theoretical model, and this formality result really gives you that this model as a, gives you really gives you a very small model of your product DN in the category of, of DG corporates. So here yeah, I have to mention that I regard this corporate in credit commutative algebras as an up, as a half DG corporate with a trivial differential, that is with a null differential. Okay. And now the follow-up is that this mapping space that we now want to compute between the model of DN and of DM can be reduced to the, to the mapping space between the N Poisson corporate and the M Poisson corporate. And where is associated in this diagram? Sorry? Where is associated? Uh, this is for M, N larger than M larger than two. Sorry. And, and you have the same result for, for M equals one, then you have to put uh, the associative corporate actually. No, why is this on, on the isomorphism? Because it's like associated, right? Uh, in the theorem. In the theorem for N equals two, the quasi ISO is given by the existence of associators actually. By which associator? Uh, Dreinfeld's associator. Okay. okay. So, so in fact, Konsevich construction, Konsevich proof, uses a corporate of graph. And actually, we use this, corp, this model to retrieve, to, to get the, the graph complex of our, of our result, actually. So very quickly, I call the definition of this corporate of graphs. So it's, it's a of DG corporat. So it consists of a collection of DG commutative algebras, which I denote by graphs and a poster R. So this commutative DG algebras are spanned by graphs with two kinds of vertices, internal vertices, which are usually colored in black and external vertices, circle I, which are numbered from I equals one up to R. And the, these graphs are supposed to satisfy some assumptions. So first of all, uh, so in the follow-up, I, I don't allow loops, but actually this is not essential. You can define a, a loop version of this, of this graph corporate, which gives the same result. We don't, we assume that the internal vertices are at least trivalent, but again, this assumption is not essential too. And that the main point, so the really important assumption is that you assume that each internal vertex is connected to an external vertex by a path of edges. So there is no connected component that consists only of internal vertices. So here is an example of such a graph with one, one internal vertex and three external vertices. And again, up to parity, this definition doesn't depend on degree, on, the, on N, so the only, so un, and only explains how to, to determine the degree of the graphs. And so it's a generalization of a previous, so it's a variant rather of a previous rule. Oops. Mm. Mm. So you're Yeah, I try, yeah just try, try need to retrieve my. <laughs> Switch touch screen again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so the, the so the only the degree of graphs and the parity depends on the, on n. So and the degree of a graph is determined by counting again uh, minus n for each degree for each minus n for each internal vertex and n minus one for each edge. And the differential is defined by the blow up. So it's, it's, a, it's the adjoint operation of the previous blow up operation. So we see that you can uh, merge internal vertices together or merge internal vertices and external vertices as in this example. And the product of graphs is given by the union of graphs along external edges, as in this picture. 
and the core product core products so i'm not going to to explain this in detail so if you take a graph alpha and k plus ms1 then the result is a tensor product of a graph on k external vertices and the graph of la external vertices so the core products of the image of alpha of a graph under this core product operations it is determined by taking the sum over all subgraphs beta of alpha based at the external vertices circle i circle i plus ms1 of and then you take one factor which is simply given by beta and the other factor the core product just de defined by by collapsing beta to an external vertex in alpha so this gives you an up digit core product and you also have a variant. So maybe I'm going to split up where you allow uh, uh, internal vertices with two incident edges. And this variant is quasi isomorphic to the, this uh, up digit core part of graphs. And we use this variant when we want to make the Lie algebra GCN2 acts on, this, on the, the core part of graphs. And this action, is given by a generalization, so it is given by this formula. It's just a generalization of a Lie bracket of a graph complex of a GCN2, of a graph complex GCN2. And so the so this core part of graphs, so this core part of the G core part of graphs is considered in the Konsevich formality theorem. So it says that F. again. Oh, yeah. And the, so actually, so, so, so you can prove that this gives you another model of, of the ends. So this core part of the G of core part of graph is quasi isomorphic to the model of the N. And it is also quasi isomorphic to the Poisson core part. And and this quasi isomorphism is quite explicit, and this one is also very explicit in conservation construction. And the fact that this corporal of graphs is coherent. So the, the idea is that in our computation, we don't actually use the n Poisson corporal, but rather graph corporal to get a reduction of the computation to get our result. So I'm going to, to explain the ideas in one or two minutes. So, so the idea of, so I'm, I'm going to focus on theorem A actually. So what you want to do, so if you remember, so we have reduced the problem to computing the space of the derived mapping space of appropriate maps from D, from the N Poisson corporate to the M Poisson corpora. So to compute spaces of maps in the derived sense, we have to take a coherent replacement on the source and a coherent replacement on the target. And actually the coherent replacement, we can take this corporal of graphs. And as a fragment replacement, what we take is a general construction which is an operatic version of a, of a boardman fork W construction, which is a, a standard coherent replacement for operas in, in topological spaces. So, and the, now we want to compute this space of, of maps, so the underived, and the claim, so the first reduction, that this space of maps it can be described as a smaller quantum space associated to an L infinity algebra of bi derivations from the graph model of the N Poisson corporate towards this part manifold resolution. Okay, so this gives a first, so it's, it's actually it comes from a general statement, actually, so it gives you a first reduction. Next reduction, so, so it's so yeah, just a reminder of his definition of a more carton space. For, so what you have to do now is to compute 
this complex of biderivation, so I've not been precise about the definition of biderivation, so it just says maps that are derivations with respect to the commutative algebra structure and co-derivations with respect to the corporate crop products. So you are left to computing this complex of biderivations as an L infinity algebra. And for this, we use further reductions. So we use that this corporate of graphs, in some sense, is freely generated by internally connected graphs, and that this Boardman Fog W construction is co freely generated as a corporate by something which is quasi iso to the operatic cobra construction on the M Poisson corporate. So this gives you a first reduction. And the next one is to use the costule duality theory of Oprad, which says that this operatic coba construction is quasi iso to an operatic suspension of the M Poisson Oprad. And now the claim is that, is that you have a simple map, very simple map from the Henry graph complex to this M object, which turns out to give a quasi isomorphism of L infinity algebras from the bi this complex of biderivations between the bi complex of biderivations and the Henry graph complex. And then the conclusion of theorem A follows from the homotopy invariance of more Carton spaces. And the proof for theorem B, so I'm going to just this more based on the same reduction, we just use the extra reduction, but uh, that the twisted version of the Henry graph complex can be reduced with the result of Thomas, it can be reduced to the, to the Konsevich graph complex. And that's, and so it gives you the result which I mentioned at the beginning. And so that's also, so Victor will talk about this generalization. And just to, to conclude, I would say, so this is in the other rationals. So the remaining questions are what would be the generalizations of graph complexes in positive characteristic, and would we be able to get such combinatorial graph complex descriptions of the operatic mapping spaces mod p? Okay, so thank you for your attention. Fabrizio graphs is to roll in the hop category. So you have hop, it's going to find it. Yeah, it's uh, it's only in the hop when you so what do you mean? So no, it's cofabrant. Then you have this generated size. We're proud of uh, so this of DG crowd of graphs, it's cofabrant as a yeah, it's cofabrant as the a hop, only the hop. It's a cofabrant as a of DG crop. Yeah, but not we cannot say just DG. It's it's not a digital prod, so yeah, I'm kind of considering. So it's also confirmed as a core prod, but it's trivial. Every digital core prod of our of our field is confirmed. So, ah, I but it's, but, it's, I but, but what you mean? It's it's not fibrant as a core prod. Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.